Hello and good evening. Uh, welcome to BCL Beyond the Boundary with myself, Simon Booth, again. Um, this evening's uh, edition of Beyond, uh, Beyond the Boundary is quite a, a special one and a, and a different one. Obviously, uh, for the past sort of, uh, you know, five, six weeks, I've been interviewing local captains and chairman and representatives. And obviously, we've had our league chairman as well, John Hutchinson. Um, we've also um, interviewed David White recently as our first Bolton League legend, top all-rounder of all time of, of Bolton League cricket. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to say that we've got um, one of our one of our own, one of our own sort of Bolton boys. I don't, you don't mind me saying that. And we've got uh, Josh Bohannon of, of Lancashire County Creek Club. Hey, Josh. Hi, Bert. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, very well, mate. Thank you very much. Um, Thanks for taking a bit of time out to speak to us. Um, you know, I've got a few of these lined up and I'm going to sort of, you know, um, interview some different people. And uh, obviously, you're going to be the first person sort of out of the league who's not currently in the league that we're, that we're speaking to. Uh, I've got a few more lined up. I'm hoping to speak to um, very good friends of yours in Matt and Cal Parkey. So, obviously, that's going to be that's going to be a good one. So, if you want to get any digs in now, you can do. That's one. Um, but yeah, I mean, essentially, this is going to be slightly different. It's more going to be a, a bit of a chat between me and you about your cricket, where you started, where you are now, and the journey in between. Um, so first things first, you know, a lot of people will be watching these. They don't know me from Adam. A lot of people will know who you are, but essentially, just introduce yourself, who you are, what you do, where, where you're playing, and where you go. Well, as you said, um, Josh Brown and um, current Lancashire cricketer and um, from Farmouth, same as you, Booty. Um, I'm a top. I messed it up already. Can you? <laughs> don't, hey, don't worry, don't worry. So, just where, basically, where you started? Where, where did you start? You know, where did you start your cricket? Um, and I'll just keep prompting you. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, go on. So, where, where did you start off in terms of cricket? From a young, from a, a young kid who's never played the game before. You know, where did you start? Uh, started off at. At Farmworth Green Club on, on Lavender Road. Um, previous to that, um, just just to get you an insight about how it all started, uh, was my brother was playing at Curzon Green Club at the time. Uh, I think he was probably 15, 15, just at old school and stuff like that, playing with his mates for a bit of fun more than anything, nothing, nothing serious. Um, you know, obviously I was still in primary school, then I was eight. Uh, I started to, to go down a little bit and and watch him and, and train with his mates and stuff. Um, so I'd go down and just watch and, I don't know, play whatever. Play. I used to play football then, so play football with my dad on the outfield while they were training. And then uh, after after a while of watching, I thought, oh, maybe I could give this a bit of a crack, like, you know. Um, so I picked up a bat, a couple of throwdowns, whatever, with my dad. And then next week came, did the same thing. And... Uh, I can't, I can't remember who was a coach there at the time. I can't remember his name. I can picture his face, but I can't remember his name. But I think he said something like, I think, oh, I think his son's got a little bit of something. I think he should do a bit more training or whatever. Um, and it all kind of went from there then, really. And, you know, the rest is history. But uh, from there then, Jamie went went to Farmworth to, uh, to play with his mates again. You know, Hickey and Rain and people like that. Yeah. Uh, um, and that's when, that's when we met. Um, Obviously, it took a lot of time to do a lot of coaching with me over the next probably two years, went until I was about 11. Um, obviously, within that time as well, I was very lucky to to meet Parchy, Brenton Parchment, who was, was a professional at the time there. And the team at that club at that time, when you had the Barrows and Chalky, yourself, was, was as, as good a team as I've seen, club cricket-wise. Um, and then, yes, yeah, started to play a little bit then for Farmworth. Played yeah. obviously the age group stuff and um, at well, twelve that, that'd be about two thousand and five. So Brenton Brenton's first year at Farmworth was two thousand and five, yeah. and it was my it was my first year back at Farmworth as well. Um, yeah, you know people know me from playing for Farmworth, but I I'd gone from a junior at Farmworth playing my cricket at Social, then yeah. I got the opportunity to go and play first team cricket at Heaton. Yeah. Um, played four or five years at Heaton, and then Chris Barrow. Asked me to come back to Farmworth and keep, um, and obviously that's that's where it all kicked in. And we um, we had Brenton Parchment as pro. That that was his first year, and obviously you were a young lad um, who we'd seen for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, doing the tins. Yeah, absolutely. Doing the tins, we do, yeah. Yeah. 
So obviously Brenton, I think, was obviously a, a big, a big part of, of of you growing up. Obviously, yes, I was around, and you know we're going to touch on you know childhood influences. I think it's probably the next bit in terms of your cricket as a as a junior. Um, and it's quite difficult for me this because obviously I've seen you from such a young lad. Um, but in terms of childhood influences, who you know who sort of who, who influenced you as a cricketer? Well, I think it would be wrong to say you weren't one of them, Booty. I know it's not I'm just not just saying because we're on camera, but I'll say to you in the past, uh, you definitely be one that's you know giving me a lot of time as a kid and um, giving them extra hours on a Friday night, which you didn't have to do, and you know helping out, like, like me joining with some some senior st stuff when I was only a, a kid um, and getting me involved in like the fielding drills and stuff like that. Um, Obviously, my main one, and probably no one else will ever top it, and I think it's virtually impossible, uh, would obviously be my dad. Yeah. Uh, give up. And, and my mum as well. Um, you know, it's not it's not all with my dad. Yeah, my dad's done the hard yards and thrown, thrown the balls and stuff like that. But yeah. uh, I think I'd be wrong to say my mum's been a massive influence in my life and, and in my career. Um, she's given up near enough everything. Same with my dad. When I, from when when I start when I signed for Lanx Junior stuff, you know, eleven years old, um, they've given up everything until now. Um, yeah. it's, only, it's only now that they've started to go back on holiday again. They didn't have a holiday for seven, eight years, um, yeah. and it wasn't based on the fact that they couldn't afford it or nothing like that. Uh, it was just purely based on the fact that they wanted to make sure that I could get to every game possible. Um, you know, they even bought they bought a bigger car. Just to make sure my my stuff could fit in, so that when we used to go for that week to Taunton, we could get everything in and you know not be trapped in, in inside for a long journey. And, uh, yeah, so my me, me mum and dad are uh, the top of the list without without saying. I think uh, a lot a lot of um, you know I'd say younger players. Obviously, you, you're still young. Um, you know, lads who have, have represented you know the the the, the counties. You know, I've, I've mentioned the parkies before, and we've probably got a list this long of of, of people in and around your age group. And we're going to talk a little bit about the other players in and around um, that sort of mark. A C, you know, and, and, and we'll, we'll come to that in a sec. But, you know, what I'm trying to say is that the, the parents of these um, lads and girls now, you know, travelling up and down the country, taking time off work, um, it, it's a huge commitment, isn't it? Yeah, massive. It's not, it isn't, or it wasn't for me anyway. I don't know what most of my families are like, but for me, it was most of my nan and granddad as well. Um, they've, I don't think they've missed a game for, you know, within a certain distance for since I've started. They used to come to Taunton. They, they, they love. They've been everywhere. They always come to Old Trafford watching now. Uh, they come to Ormsgate because they love it. Um, you know, I've, I've been so fortunate with the uh, with the upbringing that I've had, and obviously now um, the the support that I get from obviously Lucy's side of the family with Ian and yeah, Liz and obviously Lucy and Scott. Um, very fortunate, really. To, so I've kind of that um, that background of, of people that are, you know are just always willing to um, to try and help me try and I always try and push me to one step further. It's, um, you know, obviously my dad's never let me get ahead of myself for obvious reasons. You know, if you know what my dad's like, but yeah, um, ultra competitive. He, he always has been, Annie, and I think yeah. that's probably where you get a lot of it from. And if mm. people know, obviously, people the people who know Glenn will know that. Obviously, in his day, he was a decent footballer, good all-round sportsman. But he's got that, he's got that bit between his teeth. He'll just try and win everything, won't he? You know, he's that yeah. type of person, really. He's a winner, isn't he? Yeah, massive. He don't, he won't do anything unless he knows he can do it to his best ability. And if he, if he, he very rarely do something if he can't win, especially in a, obviously in a sport environment. If he knows he can't win, he's got no interest. And in, <laughs> so, I think that's probably where I get it from. Like you say, Booth, like, I, I don't really. I don't often do things to just compete. Uh, if I'm doing some, I want to win it. So proper, yeah. That's that's, that's a good way of looking at it. Um, so that's that. The, the, obviously, the, the the childhood side, and there's obviously we could talk all night about that side. But where I want to go now is obviously your journey from being a youngster in the Bolton League junior cricket, all the way through to you know senior cricket, and then a little bit more, and then into the pro game. So let's go from sort of childhood junior cricket. Um, what sort of players were you playing with? You know, 
Uh, I, I know the story. I, you know, I, I know a lot of the, the, the lads because I've been in around. You know, I'm, I'm a lot older than you, and I've been in around. I've watched you guys grow from being real young lads into you know the young young professionals that you are now. But you know, talk about some of the teams that you've been in and, and some of the names, and because you've, you've played in some unbelievable junior sides. Yeah, to be honest, again, Birdie, I've, I've probably played in some of the best junior sides to ever play cricket, really. Uh, and I know that's a bold statement, but if you look at what we won in in all the different types of format, you know, we were, it was an unbelievable side. But yeah, going going from the start, um, obviously, Barmouth started playing there when I was uh, when I was nine. Played some junior cricket there um, till I was about eleven. Um, obviously, and you know, unfortunately, was, I can't remember exactly what happened. It's probably slightly too young to understand, but something went on with the junior setup and. It's a dead simple thing at Farmouth. I mean, we're fortunate now that we turned the corner, but way back when, um, I would probably be remiss to say that probably you and Ross Sutton were probably our two best juniors. And the junior setup at Farmouth just fell to bits. You know, we, we didn't have many juniors and we had you, we had Ross and a couple of others. And I decided that you two guys were better off playing elsewhere for your development because Farmouth struggled. So... You know, you went to um, my old club in terms of social circle and, yeah. and Ross went to Heaton, which was also my old club because I knew that the people at them clubs would look after you both. Yeah, so yeah, I went to social from there, really, and I only went there based on the fact that I heard it got a decent setup from yeah. myself. Uh, my dad took me there and, you know, playing in them sorts of sides, playing with Haas, people like that, um, Chris Lane, fantastic junior cricketer, um, Ashley Williams, Jay Charna, uh, what's it called? The uh, left arm seam, I thought his name. Uh, anyway, but, but, but plenty, yeah, plenty decent cricket, plenty, plenty decent junior cricketers because Social plenty. Circle have always produced good juniors, yeah. And uh, obviously, we played all the way there till I was about uh, 16, 17, and in that time, obviously, when I got to to 13, started playing a little bit of second team cricket. Um, only filling because my dad wasn't, I don't think he was, you know, confident really in me playing. And uh, I think more than anything, he wanted to get up more than anything yeah. and, and off the game. Because at the time, obviously, I'd, I'd played for Lanks for two or three years then um, and obviously done okay. So I think he was thinking, oh, I don't really want him to get hurt now and kind of knock his confidence back. So started playing a bit of that and then gradually did okay. And then got a bit more confident, you know, started about mastery captain then. Probably started batting at eight, then I went to seven, managed to get a goal at five now, but by the end of it, three. And then um at like fifteen, maybe fourteen, I started doing the same thing with with first team stuff. So Parky was a captain and it was um you know, I'd I'd do the same thing. Uh, it chucked me in in all sorts of building places and I loved it. Loved it, you know, diving around, like walsh and keeping. Who obviously you you know you look up to, don't you? As a, as a kid, when you're watching them all play and stuff, yeah. and um, you know you play against you lads and you watch, you know, fast the game was. And I was, oh, I want to, I want to to this like. So obviously got involved and then gradually again worked my way up in the order and um, in that side was what was probably one of the best senior sides I've played in. Um, you know, both both Barrows, Parkinson, Walsh, Tongi. Yeah. Luke Perry, um, Luke Perry in there as well. No, has he gone then? I He's gone, him. yeah, yeah. Um, Tim, yeah, Reese. Beanhead was playing then. Frenchy. It was a, sorry if I missed anyone out, but the side was that good. Uh, when we, and then when I was seventeen, that was me. Uh, that was me last year with it. I might have been sixteen. 17, I can't remember. It was twenty thirteen. I know that we won the league, and I still speak to Walsh about it now and say that's the best best team I've played in senior cricket wise. Uh, and then from there, then went to went to Southport for one year. We went and played with Scott, um, Scott Lee's obviously Lucy's Lucy's brother. And then only did a year there. Um, and then I went to Armstrong, and I've been there since in terms of club cricket. Um, so yeah, that's that's the journey of my club cricket. Um, and obviously, you know, when I was when I was nineteen, I um, I just. Um, I had a real difficult time actually really, with cricket. I don't know if you, I don't know if told you this before or not, but um, when I was I just come to Armstrong then from from Southport and couldn't 
couldn't get picked, basically. Like, I was doing well in second team stuff. Chewy was in charge. Um, and I, I, had a, I had quite a difficult time, really, and, and kind of fell out of love with it because I was doing well and I, I couldn't get a game. And at the time, I was kind of like, I don't understand why. Which now, looking back and being a pro and understanding how the system works with second team and first team pros who are injured coming back, et cetera. But anyway, I couldn't get picked. So I was kind of like, well, if, right, it's not for me then. So I had, a, I had this I had a difficult chat and said, right, well, I'm going to can it. I'm going to come work with my brother because at the time I was working for Regio, uh, coffee machines and stuff, I was building them and whatever. Um, so I went working with my brother for six months. Uh, we I, had, remember, I remember it well. <laughs> yeah. yeah our life, we, we, you know, we earned some good, good cash together. We had a right laugh, but uh, I don't think we could have worked together much longer before one of us ripped each other's heads off. We had a few good moments on site scrapping, but uh, no, that was good. Um, anyway, so um, eventually like, I had a chat with Chewy and we, we came around and Norms could help me out with it and obviously family helped me out big time and said, listen, I think you should just give it one last crack. And um, I came back and played that year then for Norms and did really, really well. I uh, did well second team stuff and um, started training with the uh, with the first team squad then at Lanks um, in the winter, about no about October, no about November time, um, and then you know I, I got offered a contract then at nineteen, like December the sixteenth it was, remember that? Yeah. Um, so it was a nice little uh, Christmas present. <laughs> well, so obviously you, you 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 must be glad that you were persuaded to to have another go at it because I, I was I, I remember it well. I remember speaking to you a few times about it and um, you know obviously certain people had spoken to you and, and sort of, you know, twisted your arm and said, you know, give it another go. Um, and I know that a lot of your performances um, for Armstrong, um were obviously being watched. And, mm. you know, there's no secret that you ploughed into some serious runs that season and did very, very well. And a lot of people who were very influential at Blanks obviously watch you do well for the club. And, mm. you know, like you said, the rest is history, isn't it? Yeah, I think one of the main ones, Boothie's obviously one of your good mates, one of my good mates as well, is Heggy. Um, he was playing for Bamford Fieldhouse and I think I'd already chatted to you, I think, about this situation because it's coming back to me now. And I remember you saying to him something like, I think you should have a chat with with Josh and whatever, he's giving up and he's like, oh, OK. I remember turning up at the ground that day. I was quite nervous, actually, knowing and that you... I didn't realise till the morning of that game... Sorry, cut you short. I didn't, I didn't realise till the morning of that game... Um, he came to my house to borrow a bat and borrow some keeping gloves, believe it or not. Which I know you'll, you'll, you know, Warren's like, Warren's like that, isn't it? So he came and borrowed some stuff, and um, and then obviously he was he was playing for Bamford against you guys, and I didn't realise you were playing actually. I didn't know you were playing against each other. And then he rung me after the game and said that you'd basically won the game for Ormskirk, and you know he was very impressed. And then you know I think you you had your chat with Lanks then, didn't you? Yeah. He, he, I think, well, I think Heggie definitely played a part in me getting a contract. Definitely. Um, obviously, I did do well, and uh, I'd like to think I got it based on merit of scoring runs. But uh, I, de- you know, I've I've got Heggie. Uh, I've got a lot of thanks to Heggie for helping me out, and and since I've since I've signed as well, and he's been on a few of my tours to to Dubai and to India, um, you know, Spain, whatever, and he, he's helped me out big time. Just having a general chat, you know, he. He's Bolton lad. He just he talks, you know. He carries on, and he'll just he'll just say, "Listen, just just think of it every game. Don't don't think of this. Don't think. Just enjoy it." And that's what uh, all the lads love him, just because he's it's purely he just puts a smile on your face. Um, and I think just from you know for people that are watching this, if or if anyone does watch it and he's actually interested in stuff or he's been through a difficult time, I think the key is to actually understand that it is a game. Um, Obviously, there comes a time where it is your job, and you know you've got to pay your wage, and it pays for your all your stuff, mortgages, cars, etc. Of course, it does. So then there's a bit more pressure, but I still think the key is to enjoy playing cricket um, and play with a smile. You know, that, that's the key message. To me. Well, it's, a wise man once said, "It's the same bat and it's the same ball." So yeah. it's a, it's a it's a fair point. Um, which leads me on to the next, the next sort of bit with you. And 
obviously there's going to be this is going to this video is going to go out on the, the Bolton League page, the Facebook page, and and I'm one thing with you being a young professional and from Bolton, there's a lot of our league coaches and, and league managers are going to see this and they're going to send it to the WhatsApp groups where the youngsters are and the parents are. What I want to ask you is. In terms of some of these kids who are in and around Bolton, not just Bolton, but Bolton and Manchester and surrounding areas, let's say Lancashire, anyone in Lancashire, a young lad who wants to be a professional cricketer, what three tips can you give them? You know, what three tips would you say are the top tips to become, you know, a professional cricketer? Um, I think that's you understanding that you have a weakness, um, whether that be mentally or, or technically. I think it's about, it's about understanding that early rather than later and I think the sooner like I said the sooner you, you understand that I think the better your game will be um, now like I said whether it's a technical issue and but you're mentally strong so you, you know that when you come in you're not going to look the best but you know you're going to fight forever and you, you're going to earn every run um, so I think that's that's a massive thing now, I know that might sound a bit strange for me to say to you but for me that's massive now it's not about like oh do this do that for me it's that sort of stuff so uh, I think understanding that you will have a weakness in your cricket um, at some, whether it, it, you know, like I said, it could be technical, uh, physical, any, anything. Um, so that's number one for me. I think the second one is to work harder than anyone else. Um, you know, I, the amount of things I gave up as a child just to try, and it, don't get me wrong, it's probably not coming from me. It was my mum and dad. They said, listen, if you want to be any good, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. So why, why other lads at 14, 15 were in the park having a fag and a beer? I was, I was down at the farm with him dark, hitting tennis balls and corkies against Peter because his mum's fence. You know, I, <laughs> We just painted that today, funnily enough. Oh, I went uh, eventually put that net up. I was trying to hit sixes and whatever. Uh, yeah, so, so they're, they're two. Uh, work harder than anyone else. Um, and I think the third one is... It's, it's probably similar to the second one, but just way different. I think it's just, you've got to put the hours in. Um, I don't know if that comes on the same bracket as number two. I don't know, but um, well, that, looking hard, there's got to be a time element to something. So, so yeah, I get that. I get that. You know, there's got to be a time element. I used to think that if I played, if I, if I you know played a cover drive for an hour, come come a game, I'd just be able to play it. We don't work like that. It's a it's about getting used to like using them their muscles and getting used to that that shape of playing a shot um, I, st I still do it sometimes with, with training out first team cricket like for lengths I'll do something for an hour and I think I've done it and then you come back the next day and you make a mistake and I think that's the key is just to understand that you're going to make mistakes but you've got to keep working at it working at it working at it you know and the boring stuff is the stuff that's important so dropping tennis balls from your chin and hitting them straight Stuff like that, or off your shoulder, what I used to do as a kid. Doing that sort of stuff is not just for kids. It's what pros still do now. You know, Matthew used to do like four hours of tennis ball work a day, something, something like that. Uh, and there's a reason why the stats are there, and that's why they play for so long. Is because they do things for longer periods of time. Fair point. So, any juniors out there listening and watching, you know, listen to that and, and obviously repeat it. Do the do the boring stuff well and do it for a long time. But obviously, you know we've all got we've all got strengths, we've all got weaknesses, and um, they're there to be looked on. Lastly, Josh, if that's all right. So obviously we've we've gone through sort of your you know your game and what have you. People don't get the opportunity to speak to a professional cricketer a lot of the time. So one thing I want to sort of speak to you about is is the is the pro game. So we've talked about practicing. We've talked about you know, how you hone your skills, how you've done well uh, uh, with your junior cricket, worked upwards, first team in, in league cricket, went to Ormskirk, played some good cricket, etc, etc. So we've gone through all that. The professional game. So there's a lot of people out there who don't get this chance. I mean, I speak to you quite regular. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm friends with Eggy. I get to speak to him about professional cricket. I'm in a, a fortunate position. There's going to be people out there who don't have that facility. Let's talk a little bit about the pro game and why it's so different to league cricket. Because we can all play a bit, you know. We've all we've all we've all got fifty. We've all some of us have got hundred. We now have had a few wickets. But jumping up that level to the pro game, in your opinion, you know, where's the differences? What, why, you know, why is it such a gulf? 
Um, I, I think we've had that before a few times doing the um, having, having obviously played all different types of cricket uh, and obviously the three formats in professional cricket as well. Um, I think <laughs> it might sound stupid. You play club cricket, right, and you, you'll play against your best bowlers, right? You'll play against like the ones who I'm thinking of now, who the kids obviously won't probably know, but you like to Parches, um, you likes of Chalkies, um, Lee Childs, then like Bar Chris Barrow, people like that, who, who were just relentless in, in bowling the same ball for each and every time. Now, when you're playing club cricket and you're only playing club cricket, you kind of put yourself in a bubble that, right, well, they're the, they're the good ones and I'll just batter the rest of them. Yeah. But, like, actually, the amount of balls that you miss off the good end because you just think, oh, I'll see them all, see them all. Whereas, actually, like, you probably get two or three bad balls and over in club cricket. You, depending on who you're facing that is, you know, yeah, you, might of course, get, yeah. you might get one, one over. But if you work it out over the course of a spell, you probably get two or three bad balls at, in, in and over. Now, as you gradually move up, into first team cricket from second team cricket, you might only get two bad balls and over, or you might only get one. Yeah, and then move up again, and you start playing rank second team stuff where pros are coming back from injury, or there's someone trying to fight for the case to get into first team. You might not get a bad ball for six overs, and then you step up again, you play first team cricket for championship stuff. This is red ball cricket, four days, obviously. You then might not get a bad ball for 15 overs. <laughs> you then you've got to find a different way. So whether that is like knocking into cover at one, you've got, you have to find a way of keeping the run rate obviously ticking over. Yeah. And the only other thing as well is that it happens fast. There's not necessarily much difference from playing as a nine-year-old kid, and I've said this all my life, from playing as a nine-year-old kid to playing now, there's not a massive difference. The only thing being is that, like I said, you get you don't get many bad balls in your innings, and it happens faster. And obviously the fielding's better. Yeah, uh, we're the, going to touch on fielding because obviously you can't just and just think yeah, easy one. Like yeah, it doesn't happen, does it? Yeah, but um, it's just a bit faster with it. That, that's all it is really. And obviously you've got other things. You know, you've got background noise, etc. But that's something that creates an atmosphere, and that gets people going in different ways. Yeah. So that can obviously affect performances and can affect your state and how you how you react to things. But um, I think gen generally, like um, there's not a great deal of difference. Like I say, it just happens that a little bit faster, a little bit quicker. One thing I want to touch on, obviously, you know, we, you know, I say we, I'm, I'm you know, someone who plays league cricket, and there's, there's plenty of people um, who are listening to this now who play league cricket, and, and we all do all right. One thing that we don't do. He's playing in front of twenty thousand people. What's that like? Yeah, it can be. Uh, it can go one or two ways, really. <laughs> um, if if I'm playing at Old Trafford and there's twenty five thousand people for a Yorkshire game, it is the best because obviously everyone's shouting your name, everyone's buzzing for lengths. Now you got the opposite side of the Pennines, <laughs> and you play headingly in front of Western Terrace could be a totally different experience. <laughs> um, yeah, you get hammered. Yeah. Um, but, um, I, I love it. I love it. But I think when you, a lot of the time, when you're actually playing, you actually don't hear anything. It's only if there's a boundary hit or you make a mistake in field, drop a catch. Um, you know, things like that. That's when everything starts. and Or in between overs, like, and all the fireworks are going off and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, it, it's as good as it gets, but it, it is what you dream of as a kid. Yeah. You play, I mean, I'm not saying everyone can play for because people do have to move for circumstances. But, you know, for me, I'm playing for my home currently that I always wanted to play at, pro to wear the shirt, and then you're playing in front of that many thousand people. It's, it's great. The reason why I ask that question is because... Obviously, as a kid, I played on there when it went square wrong way around on, on the outside. And then I was very fortunate enough not long ago to play on Old Trafford in that sponsors day, obviously, where I played against you. But obviously, there was about four people in a, in a 25,000-seater stadium. So it was slightly different. But obviously, 
stood in the middle, looking, you know, looking around, thinking, "Wow, if this were full fireworks at night under lights, it'd be just different class." You know, I'd, I'd, it'd be. It's, I think it's every it's every lad's dream in it to to do that sort of thing, and it's just nice to see someone come from where you've started, and you know, to be watching you on telly, you know, and stuff like that, you know, watching, you know, Lanks on Sky against Yorkshire. It's it's amazing, really. It's fantastic, and and, and obviously good to see. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit now, so you don't know what's coming. So we talked a bit about the pro game. So I'm going to go sort of future aspirations for you now. Uh, a lot of people have, have regarded you as a um, as a white ball cricketer first of first and foremost. You know, fielding and versatility and the way that you play. And then obviously last year you had a phenomenal season uh, with with obviously with the red ball as the red ball game as well. Um, what are your future aspirations in terms of cricket? You know, where, where do you want to be in four or five years' time? What, you know, what, what do you see yourself being at Lanks? Um, to be honest, I, I, I'd hope that I can have a, you know, like a career like Crofty and play 15, 16 years playing all format yeah. to, to, to the standard that he has. Um, obviously, them, the, the stats are there to prove it. Um, I, I, there's, there's, mate, you see that many st- things on, on Twitter. He's white ball cricket, this, is that. He bumps it, he shins it, he snicks the red one because it swings, he does that, whatever. <laughs> that happens. That's the game. But I, I wouldn't cast myself as either. Yeah, you know, you speak to people. I'm very fortunate to be good mates with Maxi and stuff. I'm always picking his brains about fielding, batting, T20 stuff. But it's because he's played so much of it for Australia and stuff. And then in Big Bash, IPL, um, I'd be wrong to say, obviously, I don't want to be in all the competitions. Of course I do, for obvious yeah. reasons. Um, but I still want to play to cricket for England and, and that will always be my dream. I was hoping you were going to say that. Because obviously, you know, I'm, 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 all, I'm going to be speaking to Cal and Matt Parkey soon. And obviously, Matt's had the the privilege of pulling on the three lions and representing our country and what have you. And that's got to be for anybody, that's got to be the, the top, um, the top aspiration, you know, something that you're searching for. Um, in terms of cricket now, obviously we're right in the middle of the coronavirus situation and what have you, you know, what, what, what are you doing day to day at the moment? How, how is it working? You know, what are you guys up to? And can you shed any light on when we're going to get a bit of cricket in? Um, just the same as I'm sure you probably heard from most people, Boothy, um, we've, we've been sent out a, a, you know, a gym programme which we've been giving all the weights and fans and stuff for, for home workouts and stuff. So we've got a programme. So I'm doing a few of them a week. Uh, obviously, the running, doing, doing really well with. Um, I quite, quite enjoy the running. I, I don't particularly enjoy the gym stuff, but um, that's another, another story. But um, yeah, so all, all that sort of stuff really is just what everyone's doing. Everyone's making sure that you know we're staying fit, so that when we do get that call back, if we do get it to come back this year or whatever, uh, but I think everyone will be in decent shape to to have four to six weeks roughly to to try and get match fit. Um, in terms of actually playing cricket, I don't know. There's been days chucked around first of August potentially and this that and the other, but uh, I think. I think the likelihood of, of us playing this side of August is very, very unlikely. Yeah. Um, potentially, we could play some T20 cricket come end of August, September, and maybe run that competition. I think the Red Bowl game's got here. Um, it's difficult to... You'd almost feel like you're playing for nothing. And it, yeah, it's got to be... A lot of people keep going about playing meaningful cricket. and yeah they're right because like you say if you're only going to get half a dozen games in then what you know what what's yeah, all that about even one day and two and down when you've got six games it don't work um but i still think we could still have a really strong t20 comp i know we've obviously got, not going to have any overseas players but there's enough good english talent in, in every squad to you know put on a put on a fantastic show with with some t20 cricket you know, look at the people we've got in our squad people like Libby. Uh, Alex Davis, people like that, you know, uh, Parky, um, Crofty, you name it, you know, people that's played in cricket, 
Potentially, it's going to give two extra people an extra chance, isn't it? It's going to give two extra you know, youngsters to shine, and you don't know what that might unearth. You know, it might unearth something special. And definitely, there is lads at lengths as well that just miss out by one spot or on a certain wicket. You know, like, so there's all things that go. This is what people don't see. They think, oh, well, he's played for this many years, so he has to play. It's not about that. It's, it does it does get changed day by day, game by game, based on pitches, outfields, how big the grounds are tight, certain things, etc. Um, there's a lot of thought goes into each team for each game. So um, I think if we do play some cricket, uh, I think it will definitely open up a lot of opportunity for a lot of young lads. Um, and it's a shame, really, that the hundred ball things not going across, uh, going ahead. Sorry, yeah. because uh, that would have opened up. Uh, thankfully, I've played you know like a season and a half now of full kind of first team cricket. Uh, obviously, I missed a couple of games this year, but um, in terms of white ball cricket, obviously played the whole of the the one days in the T Twenty. So um, it would have been nice for me, obviously not getting picked in the hundred, but uh, to play a full season of one day cricket and 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 hopefully get a chance the order to try and uh, you know prove that I can battle the order in my cricket yeah good stuff right I've taken enough of your time thanks Thank you. uh, thanks very much for chatting to me pal really appreciate it and um, hopefully you know this video will get, to, get out to many people and, and hopefully inspire some of our juniors you know in and around Bolton and, and the county you know in a further afield so thanks for your time bud really appreciate it and uh, that was uh, Josh Bohannon, Lancashire County Cricket Club. Cheers, bud. Cheers, Birdie. Thanks, mate. Speak soon.